James G. Rickards is an American lawyer, economist, investment banker, speaker, media commentator, and author on matters of finance and precious metals. He is also the editor of Strategic Intelligence, a financial newsletter. He is the New York Times best-selling author of The New Great Depression, published in 2021, Aftermath, published in 2019, The Road to Ruin, published in 2016, The New Case of Gold, published in 2016, The Death of Money, published in 2014, and Currency Wars, published in 2011 from Penguin Random House. Let us learn about the financial market as we listen to this video of Mr. Rickards. We are already in a recession. The United States had a declining GDP in the first quarter of 2022. We had two consecutive quarters of declining GDP through at this point several revisions by the US government. So based on the rule of thumbs, we are in a recession. Now we know John Allen who doesn't know much about this in the White House and others are saying, well, we're not in a recession. They are either changing the definition or if you want to be a little technical about it, the National Bureau of Economic Research has not said so. But that is not unusual. What's normal is that the National Bureau of Economic Research can wait three months to six months, sometimes a year, before they call the balls and strikes. For that matter, it is not unusual that the recession is over before they tell you it started. So he won't expect to hear from the National Bureau of Economic Research until late this year, or maybe early next year. And wouldn't it be interesting if they waited until after the election so they don't underestimate the political twists and all this? He means that's definitely there so he is now waiting for them. He had seen the two consecutive quarters he believed were getting worse. The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta has a tracker. They're showing the third quarter of 2022. We are in the third quarter and won't be over until the end of September. They are showing that in positive territory but it's been trending down from about 2 to 1.9% to 1.6%. That is also not unusual. They have a very interesting statistical method. He gives them a lot of credit for that. But what they do everyone on Wall Street takes the day to get. The GDP data comes in you know some of it weekly, monthly, quarterly and you have to get all the data before you make a final call. So what Wall Street does is take the data they have got and extrapolate. They say, well, based on the regressions and correlations, we think it's going to end up like this. And they're usually wrong. The Atlanta Fed is something different. They take the data they have got instead of extrapolating it. They say, well, what if this is all we had? What if this was the only data that we had without guessing as to the unfilled pieces of the jigsaw puzzle? will give an estimate based on what we know and that's what they do. But one of the results of that is the estimate, again a rigorous method. But the estimate tends to decline over time. Because the pieces that they waiting to get filled in are if you're in a recession, it is getting worse by it. By definition, the bad pieces are going to come in later in the quarter so we saw this in the second quarter. They started positive and ended up negative. They started positively in the third quarter and now it is trending down. We will see where it ends up. He doesn't have to call the third quarter but it wouldn't surprise him. He said, if we're saying the recession continues into the third quarter. Even as the National Bureau of Economic Research tries to make up their minds, so in his personal view, when recession but there's no and again, he just wants to be clear that we all have our views. There are no government agencies saying who's right or wrong. They don't do that. Depression is completely different. People say, well, okay, if a recession is two quarters of declining GDP and a depression is worse than a recession, then a depression must be 10 quarters of declining GDP or something like that. Well, that's not true either. Let me say this, that first of all, you can have growth in a depression and we did. The Great Depression is conventionally dated from 1929 to 1940. It was a severe technical recession from 1929 to 1932, and then early 1933, and then another technical recession in 1937 and 1938. But from 1933 to 1936, the economy grew. Now the problem was, it was growing from a very low base. So what he was trying to say here is that unemployment in the first term of the Roosevelt administration went from like 22% to 12%, but it was still 12 he means 12% was not an improvement but nothing to write home about. The point is, being depressed does not mean continuous declining GDP growth. What it actually means is depressing growth below trend. 
So the thing is, if your potential is 3.5 to 4%, which it probably is in the United States, it is not necessarily higher than that except for short periods of time. But if your potential is, let us say 3.5 to 4% and you're growing at 2%, which by the way from 2009 to 2019, average annual growth rates were 2.2%, we had 10 years of 2.2%. Not a lot of variance around that. Not that we know 5% quarters, never know there was one mildly negative quarter but it really kinda crowded around that central tendency. But if your potential is 3.5 and, and your actual is 2, then you have depressed growth. Imagine two curves, one's going up like this and the other one's going up like this. We call that gap between potential and actual, which is actually a depressed growth. That's lost wealth. It's not well into the trillions of dollars of lost wealth because we're in a depression. He would argue that we had been in a depression since 2007. An economic depression is an occurrence wherein an economy is in a state of financial turmoil, often the result of a period of negative activity based on the country's gross domestic product rate. It is a lot worse than a recession, with GDP falling significantly and usually lasts for many years. In the US, the Greatest Depression lasted for a decade with the unemployment rate reaching 25% and wages falling by 42%. Now, economists don't like the D word, the word depression. It is simply because it doesn't have a rigorous mathematical definition. You can plug it into a closed form equation. It works exactly the way he described and he said that his source on that is John Maynard Keynes. It was good enough for him as well, but that's how he described depression. So he would say we are in a depression. That has been since 2007. Even periods of growth are below. We are below trend. We are below potential. It is a lot of wealth, trillions of dollars worth being left on the table. We are in a technical recession right now. We will see if it gets worse. He mentioned that his expectation is, it will. But that remains to be seen. But we know the White House would say we haven't had a depression since the 1940s and we're not in recession so you have to pick your experts, but the White House and government don't have a very good track record of this. Now as that relates to the dollar, people say, well okay, we have massive budget deficits. We have for a while but they're now multiple trillions of dollars per year. The baseline deficit going into the Biden administration was a trillion dollars a year. When he says baseline, it's like that's what the deficit would be if you didn't do anything. Just kept all programs going and taxes about the same, but they piled on. Now, going back to the Trump and the pandemic, there was another approximately trillion dollar relief bill at the end of Trump's term in December 2020. Then, the administration of Biden comes in. He's like, well I can top that. I'll have mine and we had the American Recovery Act or whatever they want to call it. In February of 2021, that was about another $2 trillion on top of that. Then, we had the infrastructure bill that was just another a trillion. Now we have stopped calling it to build back better. That was the worst marketing campaign in history but the Inflation Reduction Act will actually increase inflation. But that's about another trillion dollars. We also just had $300 billion of student loans. It is like saying that we should give peace, love, and understanding except the taxpayers have to pay for that. When you forgive the student loans, it goes into the budget deficit. People don't understand accounting, but that's how it works. You don't have a deficit. When you make the loan, it is carried on the books as an asset. But if you forgive the loan, you have to write it off and then that does hit the deficit at the time so we're talking about at this point 5 or 6 trillion dollars on top of the trillion dollars baseline deficit the US GDP debt the GDP ratio is up around 130% going higher. A widespread economic depression is something that the world's kept at bay for decades. However, there is always the chance for it to occur again, if not all sectors of the economy work together to prevent it. Let us continue to do our part as citizens of our nation.